for that. But I had a great reminder as we start this Friday of the, of the second month, you know, for me, the best month. A love month. We've been discussing a very special idea from the Lord for the Holy Year, which is the disciples' commitment in God's kingdom advancement. Whether you commit or not, let me tell you this, God's kingdom will advance because of his power, because of his love, because of his mercy and grace. But it's a good thing for us Christians to know that we'll be part of it and you will enjoy being in that kind of advancement. And it's just a matter of committing ourselves. That order, this is the thing that we're discussing for the whole year. And thank God we're just done with, with the first month anticipating our desire to exalt the king. And now, a theme is strengthening our devotion to love the Lord. As our king, as our Lord, we have to strengthen our devotion to love the Lord. You know, it is important for us to understand this beloved in the Lord. I know probably most of you are saying, oh, I love the Lord, I've been singing this song, I love the Lord. But as you know, it's easier said than done. It is important for us to understand when we say these things, we mean it from the heart. And so this is the challenge for us for the whole month. Being in the kingdom, being in the kingdom of the Lord, it is important for us to understand this, our devotion to love the Lord. Devotion. This is the kind of, you know, ardently, you know, dedicating a great deal of time and energy to show to the Lord that we really love Him. This is devotion. It's not a uh, you know, half-hearted type of emotions or desire, but it is a whole-hearted kind of devotion. Rather than dedicating a great deal of time and energy to love the Lord, to worship and honor Him. And the Lord has just led me to a passage where, where we can probably uh, deal with how how this this man of God really expressed or shown his desire to really love the Lord because of the great thing that he experienced and that is he experienced the love of God in his life. In the closing part of the prayer of our sister Luce, he mentioned that we can only love because God first loved us. And that is a good thing for us to understand. That's why in this passage, I have seen how the Lord has used this, this man for us in our time today to be reminded that we can only love God because He first loved us. But that love continues to motivate us, to encourage us to love Him more and more and more. That's why it is important for us to understand this love at the same time, what we can do to respond to this kind of love. So let, let, let me, let, let me uh, bring you to this passage in the Old Testament. It is found in uh, Psalm 86, verses 11 to 13. Psalm 86, 11 to 13, and I'll be reading, reading from NIV translations. And if you're there, can they, uh, please rise up? Shall we all stand? I'll be reading from NIV. Just follow up to me silently in your own translation, whatever it is. It is says it says in Psalm 86, 11 to 13, it says here, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Keep me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. May God bless the reading of his word. Shall we pray for a moment? God in loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great time. He brought us here and given us a desire to, to worship and honor you, Father, in this place. We thank you so much for the strength of the real life. We thank you for this day that we can offer our praises to our worship. And in this particular portion of our worship, Father, we pray as we study your word, we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
that you would bless this project of this creature into our hearts today. We thank you for your presence in our midst. Keep speaking to us, O oh God, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And thank you for the presence of each one. Bless us, O oh God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Yep, let me just tell you here. The central idea of the passage that we have read. It is about David's petition for God's con uh, continued operation of his love and grace upon him. For him to be able to testify about his greatness and the goodness in the kingdom he rules. It is important for us to understand that God has given us a kind of role in his kingdom for us to continue to testify of his greatness and his goodness in our life. And I've seen this in the life of David. We wrote this, I've seen this particular truth. And this is the context of the passage. And from this passage, we have to have a purpose of our study for this morning. And the purpose of the sermon is that we would be able to see our need of strengthening our devotion to love and communion and commune with the Lord by acknowledging the power and greatness of His love. We should always acknowledge the greatness and the power of His love so that we can always commune with Him and we can love Him more. That's the way how you strengthen your devotion to love the Lord. Think of His love. Think of His love. As I've said devotion a while ago, I have pointed out that it is an ardent dedication of, our, of the great deal of time and energy from us. That is our devotion. To be able to say this purpose, we have to have this study of the, the central idea of the sermon. And here we can zero in on our discussion. And in this passage, there are challenging, yet amazing ways to strengthen our devotion, to constantly loving God as we praise our commitment up in His kingdom advancement. We need to praise up our commitment. I know you've said probably the first time you accepted Christ, Lord, I've committed myself to you, Lord, I'll be doing things for you, for your glory. But you know, sometimes along the way, you, you, you encounter a lot of difficulties in Christ in life. You know, sometimes experience this time, these things in our life. And we need to strengthen and renew that commitment. But let me tell you, and carry your this passage. Just think of His love, and you will continue to commit your life to love the Lord, to advance His kingdom. And there are ways to love Him more. Title of the message, Lofty Ways to Love Him More. I've seen in this passage a novel, should I say, novel or lofty ways to love the Lord more and more in our life. And you can do that. As I've said, the premise is that because He loved us first. Let's take a look at this challenging and amazing ways. Number one. We need to have a constant holy desire to understand His way or the way of the Lord revealed in His written word. Friends, beloved in the Lord, we need to have this kind of desire always to understand the way of the Lord. And it's, it's not quite hard for us because we know that God has given us His Word where we can see all His instructions for us to walk on that path, the way to, to walk on the, the way of the Lord. And I've seen this in the life of King David. In verse 11 of our passage, you will see Letter A under this, the subtitle is that we can see the prospect of an understanding heart. You know, King David here is praying for, for God that God will give him an understanding heart. To understand the way of the Lord. He's begging for cast intervention in his life because at this point of time in his life, he was experiencing threat, troubles, difficulties in his life. 
and at that particular moment, he needs the Lord. He needs the assurance of the Lord. That's why he asked, he prayed, teach me your way, O Lord, in, in, in the translation that I've used, and I mean all that I mean, and I will walk in your truth. David has been called by God. He knew God. He obeyed and followed God. But at this time of his life, when he was experiencing difficulties and trials and troubles of his life, here is David again. Coming back to God. Lord, teach me your way. I think God has been teaching him for, for, for a long time. But here is David again. Lord, teach me your way. In, in, in the translation that I've used, oh Lord, he was really begging. He was addressing God, the sovereign God, to teach him again. And I will walk in your truth. David here is praying that God would give him this kind of understanding heart. A heart. Lord, open my open the eyes of my heart. You know. David is praying that God would give him again this kind of heart that is willing to understand the way of the Lord <coughs> at this particular time of his life. He needs the way of the Lord for him to understand more in his life. In other words, there's something in God's way that's really helpful and beneficial in his life at this juncture of his life. The way of the Lord it's important for us to always understand the instructions of the Lord is always important for us. For us to be able to walk in that, we need to ask God to help us always understand His way. Why is that? Obviously, as I can see in the life of King David. Yes, he was called, he was the son of God. He was I mean, uh, uh, a servant of the Lord, called to be his son. But he is still human. He commits mistake. He committed mistake. And he needed God, the perfect way of God in his life. To be able to love God more, no? He really needed the way of God. He's prayed that God would inform him and or instruct him concerning his life, concerning his duty, concerning his role again and again, concerning his status in the, in the sight of the Lord. Lord, I need your way. The way that God has appointed him to walk in. He was praying for this. Especially when he's probably in doubt concerning it because of his condition. It is a normal thing for us human beings to doubt the promises of God when we are in trouble. And this is the condition of King David. That God would make it plain to him what he should do at the moment it is always important for us, whether we like it or not, most of the time we find ourselves in troubles and difficult times, difficulties. Every moment of our life we need God's instruction for Him, for us to be able to love Him more. We need to know His way. Why? <coughs> Let me tell you that the world offers a lot of ways. We are in this world. The world offers that. And, and most often, it, it, you know, it is disturbing, distracting, confusing, although enticing. The world offers a lot of things. And sometimes put us from the, the kind of very focus that derailed us from following the will of God, following the way of God, the world offers a lot of ways. And if Christians 
will not mind this. Let me tell you, danger will come. The world offers a lot of ways. We need to ask God to always teach us His way. David wants to hear God's voice at that moment when he was in trouble. Lord, please speak to me. I need to know your way. I am confused. I am disturbed. But I need you to speak to me right now, Lord. And that's common even in the Old Testament time. Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. And even in the Old Testament time, our God is very particular in telling his people, you need to listen to me. The world offers a lot of, you know, voices, ways. There's only one way to be able to love and know God more. And that is his way. We need to listen to the voice of God every moment of our life. In this world, we hear a lot of noises, troubles, conditions that are appalling or akatakot. But we have to listen to God's voice. What is he telling us at this moment of our Christian life? We have to ask God to open our hearts and speak to us. This is the way. Are you hearing the voice of God whenever you are in, in your circumstances that are really troubling? Do you hear his voice? David is asking God to allow him to experience the power of his word, the power of his truth, for him to walk in it, for him to walk in it. He's asking God, he's begging God, Lord, teach me. I want to experience the power of your truth at this moment in my life. Probably you've been, you've been studying God's word, you've been hearing a lot of wonderful messages. But, if, but they are not working in our life because we don't open our hearts to a particular message of God. We need to experience the power of God in every word that is written. We need to apply it. We need to experience it. That is the way of God. Now, it's not the way of the root that it, that it offers. But sad to say, even a lot of Christians are really enticed to believe the way of the world. But if you want to love God more, ask God to teach us His ways. Let us ask God. What does Psalm 25 say? 14 5 says, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. If God is your Savior and Lord, then we should pray this Lord, show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Because the word offers a lot of paths. And most often we are deceived. Why? Because the word of God is true. There seems there's a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, what? It leads to destruction or death. 
the word of God is true. We need to surrender our hearts to God when we are walking in that path. Is it the path of God or the path of the world? There is a way that is right to man, but the end is death or destruction. We need to pray. Isaiah 2 3 B. Many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. God is the God of Old Testament, even the Old Testament. He will continue to teach us his paths. It is in his word. It is. That path we need, just like David, teach me a way so that I can walk, and I will walk in that path. The Word of God is so pregnant with wonderful promises that we can live for Him life that is pleasing unto Him, the life that is able to love Him more. Because we are sons and daughters of his kingdom. Psalm 119, 105. Very familiar, right? Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. It's a lamp. A lamp. A little light. When you step, you need a lamp. But the lighting gives you a broader and wider horizon. So even your future, if you are in God's will and way and word, you will see. But your word is in your word. His word can revive our souls. Psalm 100 or Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The stages of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Powerful. It uh, talks about uh, the law of the Lord, it talks about the instructions and directions that refreshes our souls. And, it, and the word of God in, in Psalm 19, verse 8, gives us what? The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Powerful. It's in His Word. How we mean it, how we embrace it, how we obey and follow it, you will experience the blessings of God in our life. It's a detailed instructions for our daily life. It's there. Lord, teach me your ways. The sad thing is that how how many times we read His Word, how many times we open His Word and study it. Or just we rely on what the world is telling us. That is the challenge for, for all of us who love in the Lord. If you want to love the Lord, that you mean it from the heart, then let's pray it's that God will teach us His way in His Word. Psalm 119 verse 30. I have chosen the way of your truth. I have set my heart on your loss. Beloved, let's make a choice. Let's make a choice. Let's choose the path of the Lord. If you want to love the Lord, let's choose the path of the Lord. Because in His Word, Psalm 119 verse 35, direct me in the path of your commands. For there, I find light. See? And if you delight yourself unto the Lord, what? He will give you the desire of your heart. Lord, search my heart. I want to love you. I want to follow you. Second point that I would like to share with you. We need to have a consistent holy desire to undertake the calibration of our hearts through the power of His great love. 
calibration is just to check, you know, to, to, to fix whatever is problem we have in our hearts. And to undertake is to promise to do things, to arrest the condition of our hearts. Let's ask God to help us in this. And this is what the condition of King David, he experienced this as well. And then this uh, point or A is that we can see the process of an upright heart at this time. Look at the, the petition of King David here. Lord, give me an undivided heart. Give me an undivided heart. That I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord. Oh my God. With all my heart. With all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. Wow. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. Powerful. You know, David here is praying that God will unite his heart. How is that? Because in the original it means, God, please unite my heart. Although in the prayer you will notice, give me an undivided heart. Obviously his heart is undivided. At that moment when he was uh, in, in difficult times and troubles of his life, his heart was undivided. At this moment, he really need a, a whole heart, you know, whole heart and devotion to the Lord, a united heart. It is the kind of heart that is wholly fixed unto the Lord. Fixed unto the Lord. You know, undivided is the inner spiritual and moral transformation that results in single-minded commitment to the Lord and to His will, to love Him, to obey Him, to serve Him. Undivided. This is what we need. Undivided heart. It means this, this is a kind of heart that is really, in the sight of God, is perfect, sincere. I should say sincere heart, you know, that loves God alone. It is a heart that lo loves God alone. And this heart is true to Him. Whatever it experiences in His life, this heart will be true to God. This is what we need, the undivided heart. And we need to pray for this. Even King David prayed, give me an undivided heart. Here, Obviously, King David is avoiding a, a kind of hypocrite heart. He's avoiding this, meaning a double heart. He is praying to have a single heart. You know? And, in, and, and to really enjoy God alone. I don't know if you have that in your heart. That every day of your life, you want to enjoy God, His presence. I don't know. It's between you and God. But we need to have this kind of heart. Meaning, it's kind of one that, that, that is not, you know, divided between you and the world. It must be focused on God. Beloved, it is true. Our hearts, and I want you to listen to this. This is true. Our easily, after a thousand foreign things in life. Let me reiterate that for us. Our hearts are up to wonder and hung loose. And the powers and faculties of our hearts wander easily after so many things in life. That is the human heart. And it becomes undivided, confused, distracted. What we need, a single heart. And that is for the Lord. Therefore, beloved in the Lord, 
we need God's grace and mercy to unite our hearts. Let's ask God to give us an undivided heart to be able to love Him more, to serve Him more, to worship Him more. We must avoid splintered heart. So a heart that you know wishes and focuses on so many things instead of focusing on God. I don't know. May the Holy Spirit speak to us in this regard. I am I am only sharing to you the word of God, but it's the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And David here is also praying. If given a single and united heart, he can honor, he can praise, he can glorify God's name forever. Not only at the moment that he experienced the peace of God, but he will continue to do so forever and ever. Because he experienced God. Beloved in the Lord, we can truly, we can freely worship and honor our God if we have an undivided heart. And we can love Him more. We need to have this kind of devotion. David here realized that he can truly love, that he can truly honor, that he can truly praise, that he can truly serve God because of God's great love that saves him. Did you see the verse there? Because of your great love toward me. He can all, he can do all these things loving God because he realized that the love of God continues to work in his life. God loved us first. That's why we can love him. You cannot love him if you have not experienced his love first. If you are truly believers, followers of the Lord, you should love, we should love God. And it's an experience of King David. That even in his uh, common experiences in life, you know, even in the most treacherous experiences in life, he, he was about to experience that trouble. But he saw the love of God saving him in that moment. It's in the verse of our passage. It's in the passage. It says there, for, your, for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. It is, a, it, is a, it is a Hebrew expression, you know, depths of the grave. It does not only mean going to, death, to die, but to the grave. But everything that you experience, troubling experience in life, that is depths of the grave. Are you being threatened? Feeling in danger. That is, there are depths. But we know that the love of God can save us from all those difficulties. That's why we can love Him more. Have you experienced being saved by the Lord in all your circumstances? That is because of His love. That is because of His love. You have stresses in life. Troubles in life, I know we have. But all the more, we have to think the love of God. Think of the love of God. It will save us. It will save us. It keeps saving us. Because He loved us first. I would like to end this message by giving you two passages in Scripture. Number one in Isaiah 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken, and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. Powerful love. Powerful. Beloved God has loved us so much. In this world we will be experiencing 
shaky things. As of now, we've been receiving, uh, we've been hearing a lot of news and all these things that are happening. It's, it's, it's a sign of, of, of the last days. But I believe God's love will endure forever. It is in our eyes, in our life. Whatever happens in the world, we know that God loves us. Therefore, we can love Him more. We can love Him more. Last verse. Oh, no, no, that's not the continuation. Nor my covenant, go ahead. Nor, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion in you. And then the next verse. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to feel the Lord your God. To walk in obedience to Him. To love Him. To serve the Lord your God. What? With all your heart and with all your soul. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is also the God of the believers today. The same God is asking us to love Him more because He first loved us. We love in the Lord. We can continue to bless and pour out your hearts with His love and grace. Let the Lord bless you.